solution. We, we, I would be extremely disappointed if we adjourned this session on March 28th without taking any action to provide pension reform for the regional universities, universities and the quasi-governmental agencies. But I would say with the failure of that bill tonight, that possibility certainly exists. What about, uh, I think the pension exclusion got sent back to committee, is that a potential vehicle or does it not have the readings? It does not have the readings. Is that bill, why did it get sent to a and Well, it, it doesn't have the readings over here. It, 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 it can't pass. So that's... It's dead. That's dead. It's dead, yeah. What about the 499, the Charles Greenwood salary bill? Where, where does that stand? Not sure yet. Not sure yet. Still on the orders of the day. Could that be called yet, too? It's possible. Uh, your reaction to the House passing the, uh, the so-called Secretary of State bill? I, I call it the Secretary of State Board of Elections Reform Bill. And uh, tonight is a, is a great victory for the voters of Kentucky. I think the General Assembly has sent a strong message uh, regarding protecting the integrity of our voter rolls. Uh, we were down here in caucus and then passing bills, so I didn't see any of the debate, but I heard it was a quite vigorous one. And you were I, mentioned a few times. I heard that, and I, I'm honored uh, to have my name mentioned during debate on the House floor. And I'm really, really eternally grateful to the members, the Republican members of the House, uh, who stood with me on this. I know from, from reports that it was a, a, a pretty multi-pronged attack uh, on my personal integrity. But at the end of the day, it's about the integrity of our voter rolls. And I, and I, I frankly thought it was a, a, a seminal vote for the House to stand up uh, to the, the, the kind of bullying that was taking place on this bill. Uh, the opposition and the efforts to derail it uh, were surprising uh, and unlike anything I've seen here in, in many, many years. So I, I, I'm really happy about it and I, I think the bottom line is it's a great victory for the voters and, and a strong signal that, that the General Assembly wants to protect the voter rolls. And I really appreciate Speaker Osborne and his caucus standing with me on that issue. Do you have a reaction? I think she said in her statement, it was a long statement, I think she said this was a power grab by you. She mentioned you specifically in her. Don't, I don't know how it gives me any more power. It, uh, it adds two retired county clerks uh, to the Board of Elections. I think that's probably a long overdue step. It makes it a misdemeanor to misuse or abuse the voter rolls, which she did. Uh, it can't be applied retroactively, but I believe uh, if this is signed into law by Governor Bevan, uh, she could be, ch if she would do this again, she could be charged with a misdemeanor. And I think it sends a strong message to all the Secretary of State candidates that uh, we're not going to, we're not going to let the kind of abuse and shenanigans occur under the next Secretary of State's administration that occurred under this one. Have you had a chance to talk to the governor about this? The, the Wilson I, have, I have not. Okay. Are you confident it would stand any legal challenge she handled it there? Oh, you, you never know these days of what can stand legal muster and what cannot, but it's our job to pass legislation and not be concerned with what one of the other branches of government may do. I wanted to ask you a general, we'll call it a weekender-oriented sort of question, and that is, how do you characterize the session? I mean, it's largely going to be wrapped up within a couple of hours, and uh, putting aside anything, a few important things that still might happen, what kind of a session is this? I think we sent a strong message to the world that Kentucky is one of the most conservative pro-life states in, in the country. And I, I believe they just passed Senate Bill 9, the Heartbeat Bill. I think that's five pro-life bills that we passed. And that's the that's what we promised. That's what we told the voters. If you give us a supermajority in the House, a supermajority in the Senate, and a Republican governor to sign these bills, we will pass these pro-life bills. And we did that. Uh, also, uh, after many years of trying, uh, we became the 16th state to pass the permitless carry bill. That's something that we promised. You put us in the supermajority, give us a governor to sign these bills, and we will pass strong Second Amendment bills. We passed pro-business bills. Uh, the arbitration bill that uh, President Stiver sponsored, the project labor agreement bill that Phil Pratt sponsored. 
uh, uh, Senator Senator Higdon's expungement bill is a tremendous statement on second chances and getting people back in the workforce. And we know that we need people in the workforce in Kentucky. So the school safety bill, I think we took a contemplative approach under the leadership of uh, Senator Wise and Leader Carney and came up with a good, strong school safety bill uh, that will help protect our, our students and teachers and school personnel. So I think for a short session, we're about ready to wrap up day 28. Uh, I, I, I think it's pretty successful. And, and I know it's been difficult down in the House. They've had a lot more vitriolic debate than we have. It's interesting, you know, the way the founders set it up is the Senate's supposed to be the debating society. But it, this session, it's, it's been all about the House of Representatives. And, uh, and I'm really proud of some of my House colleagues uh, for showing some real courage. The atmosphere in which this session began was in the immediate wake of the failed special session.